Over the last decade, jailbreaking on iPhones and other devices in general has been really losing its popularity. Jailbreaking, the process of removing software restrictions created by Apple's operating system, was once a popular way for users to customize their devices, gain access to additional features, and install apps not available on the App Store. It was possible not just on iPhones, but also on Android, Windows Mobile, and other smartphones at the time. However, several factors have contributed to the decline, including advancements in iOS features, improved security measures, and the ability of alternative customization options. In this video, we're going to talk about the history of jailbreaking and why it ultimately failed on the iPhone. First off, let's begin with what jailbreaking is. So in summary, a jailbreaking is done by using and exploiting software flaws on a device in order to remove restrictions which were put in place by the manufacturers themselves. A jailbroken device allows full access to the operating system and provides the right to install software not available to the App Store. This can lead to people running Android and Windows on their iPhones, as well as implementing features which don't exist yet. To sum it up, jailbreaking basically allows people to do what shouldn't be possible on the iPhone. The term jailbreaking originated on the iPhone, but it has also been implemented into other operating systems such as macOS and Xbox. The communities of hackers and developers have worked for years to allow jailbreaking to work on almost every iOS and iPadOS update. Ultimately, the reason why people jailbreak their iPhones and why it has gained so much popularity is because it allows people to customize their iPhones, download paid apps for free, and run foreign operating systems such as Android and macOS. Now to understand why jailbreaking ultimately failed, we need to know some context. In 2007, the first ever iPhone was released with very few features, and by this, I mean it didn't even have the App Store. Also, there was very little privacy and security, which, which allowed for countless bugs to make it onto the iPhone. As you might guess, these two reasons were what allowed iOS jailbreaking to take place and become so popular. This is exactly what happened in 2007 with the unofficial iPhone dev team developing the first ever jailbreak on the iPhone 2G. In 2007, Apple began telling users that it is illegal to jailbreak, which was not actually true. At the same time, it was still a relatively new concept, so not many iPhone users were aware of it. Apple also filed a lawsuit against Cydia, the most popular jailbreaking app in 2010, which they lost. The reason Apple did this was because jailbreaking allowed for the use of third-party app stores, which took away some of Apple's revenue. Jailbreaking reached its peak in 2010 through 2012, as many new tweaks were now available in Cydia, and Apple hadn't been able to patch them on later iOS updates. Jailbreaking had been made so simple that users could go straight onto the web, and they were able to jailbreak their iPhones from there. Apple wasn't able to make jailbreaking illegal, so they did discourage it by trying to void the warranty on jailbreaking devices. At its peak, nearly 1 in 10 iPhones were jailbroken. There were all sorts of tweaks, such as this one, which allowed you to connect an Xbox or a PlayStation controller onto your iPhone long before this feature was implemented into iOS 12. In 2013, Apple implemented their biggest iOS update yet, which was iOS 7. It entirely redesigned the iPhone and allowed for much more customization. Many Cydia tweaks lost their purpose because their features were now implemented onto the iPhone much more smoothly. This was actually when jailbreaking began experiencing a decline. Over the next couple of years, Apple would patch jailbreaks on the latest iOS updates, and jailbreaking still remained quite popular, just not something that you saw in everyday life. In 2019, Apple began really cracking down on jailbreaking, making it much more complicated than it previously had been. If you wanted to jailbreak your iPhone, you would need to do it through a separate computer, and iOS 13 was already out by this time, which made many jailbreaks such as dark mode completely useless. It was around this time that the purpose of jailbreaking shifted from getting the latest features to just running emulators on the iPhone and getting paid apps for free. Getting paid apps for free became harder over time as Apple patched many third-party app stores, and emulation through jailbreaking lost much of its purpose since a lot of it could be done straight from the web. The largest jailbreaking application, Cydia, closed the Cydia store in 2018 and the founder of Cydia sued Apple in 2020 over Apple's monopoly on other apps. iOS 15 and iOS 16 allowed for tons of customization on the iPhone which took away much of the purpose of many jailbreak tweaks and last year it became possible to download certain tweaks without jailbreaking the iPhone. All you needed to do to get access to these iPhone tweaks was just download a third party application. Just a couple months ago, the European Union required Apple to allow third party applications in an effort to battle Apple's monopoly over other apps. Considering all this, you can probably understand why jailbreaking lost much of its purpose on the iPhone. 
In the past, we've had jailbreaking YouTubers dedicated to making jailbreaking content, but today, nearly all of them have, sw have switched up their content or completely disappeared from the internet. The future of jailbreaking doesn't seem so bright, and it will likely completely fade out in the next couple years as new features are implemented into the iPhone and as Apple strengthens the iPhone security. Jailbreaking your iPhone is still possible today, depending on what iOS version you're on, but I would not recommend it. There are very few features that you can still get out of it, most of them just being customization to change up what your iPhone looks like. Jailbreaking your old iPhone might be worth it because it does come with a lot more features and it can be done a lot easier. I managed to jailbreak my iPhone 6 and I was able to add Face ID, Dark Mode, and a split screen feature to use multiple apps at the same time. If you want to jailbreak your iPhone, it can be done depending on what iOS version you're on. I'm going to show you all the easiest way to do it, but just keep in mind that, that this method won't work for all iPhones. So all you want to do is just search up ipa-apps.me and then just select whichever jailbreak matches your iOS version. It says it on the description of every app. And once you've downloaded the jailbreaking app, all you want to do is just go on to settings, then down to general and scroll down to the bottom to where it says VPN and device management and then there will be an option for whichever jailbreak that you just downloaded and then all you have to do is just trust the developer and you'll be able to perform the jailbreak on whatever jailbreaking app that you're using. If your iPhone doesn't work with this jailbreak, you can just watch the video in the description. The channel name is just a tech and he uploads the latest jailbreaking content. That's it for the history of jailbreaking. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out my channel to see more videos like this in the future.